Welcome everyone to part one of the StatsCog 1.1 tutorial. In this video we're going to be looking at how to set up a third person character controller with stats. So to begin with I've created a empty scene and brought in a few uh, particle effect prefabs and a U UI prefab. Let's get started. Uh, to begin with we're going to create a plane for our character to run on. We're going to assign that a material, and then we're going to go down to Null Save, Shared, Basic Controller Prefabs, and we're going to bring in our third person character controller, and our third person rig, which will replace our main camera, so we can disable that. And now we're ready to start creating stat values for our character. What we're going to want to be able to do with this character is have an HP that is affected by the level. We're going to want to have a level which is based on XP, which will have a, a base to the level to uh, control a progress bar that shows us our leveling, our XP to level, our stamina, our sprint cost, our jump cost, and then an XP gain modifier. Let's get started making our values. So we'll right click, create, talk, stats cog, stat value, and we'll begin with HP. I've started uh, with all of these stats already written down, how I'm going to use them. I recommend doing the same. It's an easy way to make sure that you know what you're getting into. So let's take a look at the stat value. Under behavior we've got value, which is either a simple value like 1.5 or an equation. And that equation can include names of other stat values. And we'll have a look at that as we go. Minimum value and maximum value, those are the same type of values, but controlling the minimum and maximum values. Uh, start with max, we'll automatically set the, the value to the maximum value. If we click regeneration enable, delay tells us how long to wait after a stats value has gone down to start regenerating it in seconds. And add per second tells us how much to add to that value every second, which we do using the time dot delta time multiplier. So it happens gradually over the course of a second instead of immediately at the beginning or end of a second. And incrementing, if we enable, uh, incrementing is, is something that you can do based on conditions. So the condition tells us when to fire an increment. In this case, this will always increment. Never use, uh, or sorry, this will never increment, so that's good. Um, one is never greater than two, so it'll never happen. But we could do if XP is greater than or equal to XP to level. And then that would happen as we gain enough experience. Add amount is how much to add to the value when that condition occurs. And run command allows us to run a command such as set max HP, which we will be doing later on. But for now, uh, let's start with HP. We're going to have a value of 1, or a value of 0, a minimum value of 0, and a maximum value is going to be an equation that's going to reference another stat value, in this case, level. So 77.5 plus 3 times level, and we're going to start with our max value. Let's create the rest now. So the level will have a min and a max of one, uh, a minimum and a current of one, a maximum value of 50. We're going to increment this when XP is greater than or equal to XP to level. We'll add one and we'll set our HP to max so that we automatically regenerate our health to full instantly whenever we gain a level. XP, we're going to start off with none, and we'll just have a large maximum value there. XP level base is how much experience it took us to get to this point. We're using that in our progress bar. And that value is going to be 25.5 times level to the power of 2 plus 87.5 times level 
minus 125 with another large maximum there. XP to level will tell us how much XP we need to get to the next level, and that's going to be 25.5 times level plus 1 to the power of 2 plus 87.5 times level plus 1 minus 125. So basically the same equation as base, except we're adding one level. Now let's look at stamina, which will control our running and our jumping. We're going to link that also to our level. So 60 plus 1.5 times level. So we'll start off with 61.5, because remember we have a minimum level of 1. And every time we level up, we're going to gain an extra 1.5. Now, no extra coding is required for this. Each one of these objects uh, has events that fire. And when you name a stat value in your equation, that stat value automatically subscribes to the other stat value to get its events. So when level goes up, it will automatically notify stamina, and stamina will automatically increase uh, its maximum value. We're also going to start it off with the maximum value, so we'll just plop that in there, and we're going to allow this to regenerate. After three seconds from the last time we lost a value in stamina, we're going to increase our stamina by five points every second. Next we're going to do our sprint cost, which I threw in the wrong folder there. And that's going to be a simple value of 12.5. It'll always be the same, no matter what level we are. Now this can be modified by effects, um, but on its own it will always be 12.5. Let's go ahead and duplicate this guy for jump cost as well. But we'll make the jump cost be 20. And the final value that we're going to put in here is going to be an XP gain modifier. And we're going to check this whenever we gain XP to um, tell us how much. So we're going to start with 1 and we'll gain 100% of our XP, a minimum of 10% of our XP, and a maximum of 300% of our XP. This will come into effects a little bit later on in the next video. So that's it. Now that we have all of our values defined, we're going to go over to our controller and we're going to add a stats cog to it. We'll lock the inspector real quick so that we can drag and drop all of our items at once. This allows both values and effects to be dragged and dropped at the same time. You don't have to do them separately and of course you can do them manually. I prefer dragging and dropping. I think it's faster. So now we'll unlock the inspector and we'll see what this looks like when we hit run. So to begin with, nothing's tied into this controller. It's just over here. But what we can see is when we go into play mode, we get a tab. We get a debug tab available to us. And if we go over there, we can inspect every single one of our values in real time. And we can issue commands to it as well. So right now we can see HP gain modifier has a value of 1. We can, we can change its value. And we can see that it gets locked in at the same time. So let's do XP gain mod equals 7. Process the command, it set it up to 3. Why 3? Because that's its maximum. It's not going to allow you to set it above or below its, its clamp rate. So this is, this is very useful to debug as things go on so you can see whether or not your effects and modifiers are being applied and, and what's going on with your character. So here's our character running, ASDW keys, uh, shift is sprint, and then the right mouse button is crouch and uncrouch. 
let's start tying these things into our controller. So we'll just edit the existing controller that we have. We're going to need a stats cog, so we'll do using null save dot talk dot stats. And we're going to add a required component to this. Type of stats cog, just to ensure that we always have one. Um, input cog is a different offering from us. We're not using it. We can just delete that. So let's see, what is it that we're going to need in this? We're going to need to know our stamina name. We're going to need to know our sprint cost name. Let's actually make that the proper case. And we're going to need to know our jump cost name. Eventually, we could even use HP to make this character die, so let's let's do that. Public string HP name. So that gives us the names of everything. Privately, we'll have a, a reference to the stats cog, so we'll do private stats cog, stats cog, and then we'll also want a reference to each one of these stats. We could subscribe directly to the events, but we're going to be using their values over and over again, so we're going to go ahead and hold on to instances of them. So, private stat value, stamina, sprint cost, jump cost, and HP. Excellent. Now we can go into start and we can get our references. So we can go stats cog equals git component stats cog and then we can find each one of our references there just by its name. So stamina equals stats cog dot find stat stamina if I could type and we'll repeat that for the other ones as well. So sprint cost equals sprint cost name. Jump cost equals jump cost name. HP equals HP name. All right, now we have references to everything. Let's plug in the stamina to the sprint. So in our initial controller, we have the ability to toggle sprinting. We're not going to use that, so we'll delete that reference. We're going to delete uh, see this item right here. We don't need this guy. And we're going to modify this guy over here. So we'll get rid of the input cog question again because we're not using it. And in here, now we're going to start checking um, our stat. So if stamina, that current value, that's the value with effects applied, is greater than or equal to sprint cost, that current value, again, with effects applied, then we'll check the button. If the button isn't down, we'll do m sprint equals false. And if it is down, we will do m sprint equals true. And then we'll remove the cost from our value. Now, you can't access them directly because of the background process that goes on, but you can call a method. So we'll do stamina.setValue, stamina.currentValue, minus sprintCost.currentValue, times time.delta time. OK, so if we have enough stamina, we'll check whether or not we're sprinting. If we are, we'll set the sprint to true, and we'll remove stamina. And if we're not sprinting, at the end of all that, we're going to reduce our movement speed to half. Let's save that, go back over to the editor, let it compile, and then we'll hit run. All right, 
so let's try sprinting again. So we're holding down our sprint key and we're sprinting. I'm not seeing stamina. Let's go down. Let's check. Oh, it was. Okay, we still had quite a lot. So we'll watch the stamina go down. It's stopping at its minimum value, but that's not stopping us from sprinting. So we need to update our code. But we can also see that it's regenerating right here after three seconds. So again, this is why it's so useful to have this debugger right in here to be able to see when we make an error in our code. Ah, okay. So we never changed it if we don't have enough. So if we don't have enough, m sprint equals false. Okay. So this should automatically stop us now uh, from sprinting if we don't have enough stamina for it. <coughs> Pardon me. All right. So we've recompiled. Let's hit play again. Okay, so now we'll hit sprint again. And now we can see we stop when we no longer have enough. Fantastic. All right, let's set up some UI so that we can visually monitor these things as a player. So we'll go into the prefabs that I brought in, switch back over to 2D here, and have a look at what we've got. So under status bars, we can see that we just have sliders. Nothing's attached to them at all. Let's create a script to handle that for us. So we'll name this demo stat slider. And again, we're going to need our reference. So using null save dot talk dot stats. We're also going to need a reference to the UI because we're going to be referencing the progress bar or the um, slider. So we're going to require component type of slider. We're going to be able to need our uh, stats cog. So stats cog, stats cog. And this one will drag and drop instead of finding. Of course, you could always find by tag and things like that if you're having multiple stat cogs out there. Usually, you would just set anything monitoring a, a progress bar to be your character. Or if you were inside of a, a enemy, you would have a direct link. Um, so, okay, we've got the stats cog. We'll need a value name, a min value name, and a max value name. We're going to make our lives easy on this one, so we'll do public, oops, sorry, that's private, stat value, value, min value, max value. And we're going to be getting a little clever with this. Um, actually, let's do stat value, stat min, stat max. Okay, so first we need our slider. So we'll do slider equals get component slider. And then we're going to need our different values. But we're not always going to supply all three of them. What we're going to do is we're going to do stat value, which we will always supply, equals stats cog, that find stat. value name and then if min value is not equal to string dot empty we're going to do stat min equals stats cog dot find stat min value and we'll do the same thing for max Okay, so what we've done here is we're getting these two stats only if we've supplied a name. We're going to subscribe to these guys too. We don't need the update because we won't be using it. Uh, as I mentioned before, these guys all fire off events when things happen to them. So 
we're going to do private void on value changed. So the, the event that they fire gives us two values, the old value and the new value. For the most part, this isn't going to be needed, but in the example of having your character get hit and lose 10 XP and, and having a text pop-up of minus 10 or something like that, these two values uh, allow you to do that quickly without having to go back and reference the cog. That way you can just uh, do a subscription and not have to keep a local value at all. So in this case we, uh, we're going to do everything at once. So stat value dot on oops stat value there we go dot on current or sorry on value change which references the current value add listener on value changed and we'll add the listeners to these other guys as well stat min stat max okay. Now we're going to update the slider. So if min value is not equal to null, slider dot min value equals min value dot current value. Oh, sorry, stat value, stat min dot current value. Else. So if we haven't sub sub, uh, supplied a, a min value, we're going to do slider dot min value equals uh, stat value dot current minimum. And we'll do the same for maximum. And then we know that we're always going to have the value. So slider dot value equals stat value dot current value. And the reason, of course, that we do it in this order is if we try to apply the value before changing the maximum value, this wouldn't work out very well for us. All right, this should take care of everything. So let's go and apply it. So we'll let this recompile real quick. And we'll select all three of our sliders and add the demo stat slider. And we'll drag and drop the stats cog in there. And for HP, we'll only supply HP. Uh, uh, AP is what we called stamina in the other project. Uh, so we'll apply stamina here. And XP is the one where we'll be using different values. So um, value name is XP. And let's look at our, our values here. So XP level to base is going to be our minimum value, XP level base. And then our max value will be XP to level. All right, that should be all we need. Let's hit play. Okay. So we can see that it's not instantly being applied at startup. <coughs> Pardon me again. But we can see that that is happening there. So what are we missing here is that we need to add in an initial call. These work fine uh, on value change, but by the time we've gotten to this component starting, each of these values have already been initialized and already had their initial values set, so a new event isn't firing. So on start, we'll just manually call on value changed with 0, 0, because we don't care what those values are, right? We're not using them here. So again, we'll recompile, start it up, and see how that works. All right, so now we're maxed out at health, we've got nothing in our XP, and we can watch our stamina go down as we run. 
And we can see that it's sort of hobbling here. That's because it's attempting to regenerate, but we're not allowing it because we're still attempting to sprint. We're also stopping at our min uh, sprint cost. Let's correct that. Let's allow us to drain it all the way. So we're going to go back here into our third person controller. We're going to add a new value. We're going to have a private bool of was sprinting. And we'll set it true over here. False if we're not. So or stamina dot current value is greater than zero and was sprinting. So we'll just need to go ahead and close that in parentheses there. This should allow us to continue sprinting all the way down to nothing. All right, we've recompiled. Let's hit play. And we'll start sprinting. All right, now we're going all the way down to zero. Let's address making it not allow us to sprint again after we've drained it until we let go of the sprint key. Okay, let's add another Boolean for this guy. So we'll do is sprint locked. Come back on down. Oh, let's get jump taken care of before we exit as well. Uh, okay, so if we are sprinting, if stamina dot current value equals zero, then we're going to lock the sprint, and then. As long as the sprint isn't locked, we'll allow that to happen. Otherwise, um, sprint equals false. And to let us undo that when we let go, is sprint locked equals false. Yeah, OK. So since we're here, and this is going to be really fast, let's do jump as well. If input dot get button down, jump button and stamina dot current value is greater than or equal to jump cost dot current value then m jump is true and stamina dot set value to stamina dot current value minus jump cost dot current value so unlike Sprint, we're not going to reduce this over time. We're going to immediately take the full cost away because once we've jumped, we've jumped. Um, so we'll go back on over and recompile. And we'll press play. And we'll hold the Sprint button down. Okay, ran out, stopped sprinting. I'm still holding the button down. Sprint, uh, the stamina is regenerating, but I'm not sprinting again. So if I let go and press it again, now I'll sprint. Let's try jump, that's the space button. Okay, and it won't let me continue to jump until, there we go. All right, perfect. So I think the last thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna hook up this uh, level indicator. So let's create a new script. We'll call it demo level monitor. And again, we're going to need our namespace. So using null save dot talk dot stats, and we're going to need UI again as well. So there we go. This time we'll require component type of text. And so what are we going to need here? We're going to need the stats cog. And we're going to need the level stat name. I'll default that to level. 
And we're going to need the text. So that's going to be private text text. Start off, we'll get text equals get component text. And this time we're, we're not going to keep a, a copy of the stat value. We'll just use it locally in start and then let it expire and be collected by the garbage collector. Okay, and again, we're not going to need to update uh, public or private void on level on value change. And then stat value dot on value changed add listener on value changed and we're going to invoke it immediately with an old value of zero and stat value dot current value so something that I didn't mention earlier um, is when you have these events if they cascade if one triggers another triggers another they can come in in reverse and that's actually what will happen to us with levels uh, if we have more than one level gain at a time. This isn't something that would happen normally but let's say you created, completed a giant quest at a low level and now you've gone from level 1 to level 4. Well if we just use this it would actually tell us we went from level 3 to level 4 and then level 2 to level 3 and then level 1 to level 2. So we'd end up displaying that we're level 2 instead of level 4. So the way to get around that with still not storing the entire stat value is to just, we'll keep a local value um, old value. And we'll use that to compare. So, well actually, <laughs> not old value, let's do last value. Um, so if new value is less than or equal to old value, or um, last value, return. We're not going to do anything. Otherwise we're going to set the text equal to level plus new value and we're going to set the last value to new value as well. Okay, this should be all we need to monitor our level. Let's go ahead and start the project once it recompiles. Okay. So we're at level zero. Uh, we didn't uh, we didn't add it to our component. That uh, that will do it. So add demo level monitor. We'll do. We'll bring in the stats cog. Okay. All right. Now we're level one. Let's go to our character. Down a debug. Um, let's see. What is our XP to level? 152. Um, if we didn't want to look this up, the easiest way to do this would have been value xp equals xp to level. Ah, but xp to level is zero. What's going on with that? Let's have a quick look over here. xp to level. Ah, I see. So we made a mistake when creating our stat value. We put the actual value into the maximum instead of value. Um, so we were never getting assigned a, a max value or a current value. So now that we've corrected that, this should work just fine. Okay, select our character again, back over to debug. Let's check the XP to level first. Okay, now we've got something. So if we do value XP equals XP to level. Alright, level 2 uh, equals XP plus 20. So now we can see the progress bar works just fine. Let's do value HP so that we can see it automatically regenerate. Uh, HP equals HP divided by 2. And let's give it a high number for our XP this time so that we go multiple levels. We'll do value XP equals 3,000. That should definitely get us up there. Level 9, um, 
we've gone up. That's probably... Yeah, just so happened to be roughly the same value. Uh, full health, we can see that our AP went up and then automatically regenerated when it had a moment. Okay, I think this is a great place to stop part one. In part two, we're going to be looking at effects and how to apply them as well as particle effects um, and, and the rest of the setup for this demo. We hope you enjoyed it and we will see you in the next video. Thanks.